Hello everyone, Funshine X here. Welcome back to Feed the Beast Unleashed in Space. Uh, today we're going to review the submissions that people have sent in for the monitor uh, display and control of my Force Core. So let's go get started. I received uh, eight submissions um, and one of them submitted two and I think I'm just going to show the one that I like better of the two. So let's start out. These are in no particular order, just the, well, they're in the order that I got them. <laughs> so the first one's going to be from Matthew. Uh, description will have a link to all their YouTube channels. So if you like what these guys are producing, maybe go check out their channel, see if they've got any interesting videos. Uh, this is from Matthew. So he's left my original display here alone. Let's go see what the monitor looks like. So this one's got uh, some nice, the percents up at the top which is pretty good, so I can see that. And then it's got the bar graphs, and they're color-coded, so blue would be, um, you know, full, and kind of matches the theme of the, the building. Uh, green looks like it's above 75, yellow above 50, and red maybe below 50, which is a good, good color status, I like that. And then he's got all the numbers here with their color code for which um, bank of engines they control, and then down here, which... Uh, if they're on or off the status. So that's a really good one. I like it. It's really quick to see, you know, which ones are being used and uh, which ones are on. And then you can see the color. I think it's all working. Some of these didn't didn't quite turn the engines on and off like they're supposed to, but uh, I'm, I'm mostly concerned about the design, not really the functionality. Um, I can fix the functionality, but an artist I am not. So that's what I'm focusing on. Okay, so that's that's Matthews. That was number one. Let's go see the next one. The next one was submitted by your fave sound tech. He's been a follower for a long time, and he submitted a ton of stuff to uh, Battleship and other kind of things. So he's really active. Let's see what his monitor looks like. Okay. I'm liking this. It's got some percents. It's very similar to what I had down in the terminal. And uh, what I do like about this is it's got a, more of a um, graphical layout of how the engines are laid out, the banks of engines. So it's really to see that these two are low, or, or I guess these five are turned on. Yeah, this one might, might be one of those that's not in a working state, but um, I like that aspect of it. Definitely until you can see which of the eight engines should be going right then. And then, yeah, I think um, maybe better use of, you know, like background colors so that these aren't just X's. That was kind of how I did it really quick on my terminal. Um, but yeah, that's that's not bad. I like it. It's sound. It's color coded. It shows you the percents and what's on and off. So yeah, meets the need. That was your fave sound tech. The next one. Oh, other than it spamming my terminal. <laughs> that's not good. Uh, okay. Oh, and then also, yeah, his, you run his program and it goes out to Pastebin and gets the latest copy of his other program and then runs that. I guess that's nice if he needed to make updates or whatever. He could just update Tower Power and I could just still run the same program. So, yeah, that's cool. All right, the next one was by Ann Zach Gaming. Right there. All right. So, that's the same. And let's see how this looks. Whoa, lots of text. Not fond of all the text. I do like the graphs are good. The color coding's nice. It's really easy to see how full they are. Um, and we've got actual controls here. So we have auto control, turn them all on. Does that work? Uh, no, I think it's just for show. So I'd have to fix that so they actually turned on, but that's no problem. Um, so yeah, I like I like the controls. I like the graphs. Um, a little too much text on that one. All right, next one. This was submitted by a guy named Jova Age. There we go. Nothing on the terminal. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to change that, but. And then this one, uh-oh, <laughs> he doesn't clear the monitor, so it was taken, taken from last. So let's let's fix it so we get an accurate representation of his design here. Okay, so uh, let's do uh, Lua. Uh, 
Um, could we just do a restart? Yeah, let's just do a restart of the computer. And then we can do it again. That should work. There we go. So, we're only showing four cells, um, which could be easily expanded, I'm, I'm sure. And then we're just showing a percent. So, this is a, a you know a good representation for the, the terminal. Um, you know, it does what it's supposed to, and you get really accurate numbers, it appears. Uh, but I want the monitor to be a very uh, more of a graphical display. I don't need all the numbers necessarily. Um, I can see those down on the computer itself. So that's not bad. I mean, it does what it's, it needs to do. Just looking for a little more color, a little more graphics instead of more the, the text again. Okay, so let's go look at the next one. This was by a guy named Jordan. I should probably actually tell you the full names. Oh, well, they'll be in the description. <laughs> the, the guys that win, I'll show you the actual ones. Okay, so he actually updated the entire display as well. And um, I read his note, and he says to upgrade this to advanced computer, which I haven't done yet. Um, so instead, I just changed these all to black and white. Um, so you still get the, this to see his display. It's just kind of updated what I had to begin with. He's spaced it out nicely, and yeah, it looks pretty good. And then if we go look at his display here... Okay, so we've got a list of the cells. We've got kind of their capacity here, whether they're on or off, what percent they are, and then status again. So that seems duplicated if that's on and that's on. Other than can we click on this to like manual override? Doesn't look like we manually override it. So I could see that, you know, maybe a button, instead of saying status, maybe say like override and just turn it on or off or something with a touch screen. But that's cool. Um, what's cooler about uh, Jordan's, other than this monitor program being pretty decent, is uh, he added terminal display. So if you guys don't know how the terminal works, you put uh, this guy down, which is from... Uh, is it... Uh, do, 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 open peripherals all right and it's called the uh, terminal glasses bridge and here's the recipe it's just a bunch of modems and a redstone block and they make terminal glasses which are two monitors and a network cable it's kind of weird wearing monitors on your face but uh, yeah and then you can put them on and you can see we get this display down there look at that that's pretty cool so I can be anywhere in my base. I'm not sure the range of these glasses. Maybe that's the whole dimension. Maybe it's the whole entire world. But see, so I can be way out here and be like, oh, my engines, they're all looking good. I really like that. And I plan to do that um, on my own because I really want to learn how uh, the terminal bridge works. Um, so I'll be making one of my own displays. But I really liked that he went the extra mile and kind of gave me one of those to start out with. So I can probably even use his code to learn it, which kudos to you. Uh, probably be naming a villager after you, if nothing else, just for that. Okay, so we've got that. And he even actually had a, a, a bug in when he first submitted it to me, and I sent it back to him, and he fixed it really fast, so that's also a big plus. Okay, the next one, we just did Jordan, so this will be Andrews. And nothing on the terminal. Monitor. All right, that's pretty pretty simple, but but it's good. Um, we've got the percentages, the bar graphs, and the number color coded as well. And it looks like that one dipped below 50, so it's now turned on. Hopefully, it goes up to 90 and then turns off. That was interesting. That one went up, but it's not on. I'm not sure how that happened. <laughs> oh, other than oh, I know why. Because five and one are connected. Haha, <laughs> I see. So that's, maybe that's a flaw in my design here. That I could turn one bank on and it's actually powering both cells. But it's hard to show that in this. Okay, interesting. Oops, not save and quit. Let's go back down. So that was Andrews, pretty good. Again, a little um, more textual, you know, I actually have to kind of read it to see the status. Uh, his is nice in that it runs parallel code, so one's updating 
kind of the monitor and another one's updating the, the values, I think. I'm not sure. Uh, all right, the next one is Thiago. All right, so how does his look? Oh, wow, look at this one. That one's impressive. It's got a very Windows type feel to it, you know, <laughs> like it's got the little outlines and stuff and some uh, captions down there. So these four, the purple ones, are the bottom engines, and then these four are the top engines. Easy to see their power. Uh, I'm not sure I like pink. Red might be better. <laughs> Unless that is red and it's just colored weird, but yeah, that's really easy to see. Okay, we get orange when it dips below, and then it should turn on. And then over here, these are all set to auto, I believe, if I click one. Okay, so we can set it to manual. That's really cool. I like that. can turn these guys on and off. So it goes on, off, and then auto. Cool. Really cool. All right. I like this one. It, it's a little busy up top. I don't think we need the gray. I don't like, uh, the gray background kind of detracts from it a little bit. And then I'm not sure I'm fond of the yellow background there, but otherwise it's really it's really pretty. It's good use of layout using the entire screen. I might instead of of putting this in a separate way, just just put it right next to each cell. So it's easy to say, oh, this is a 67, and something's wrong. Let's just manually override, turn it on or something. I don't know. Okay, so that was Thiago's, and we got one more. This is by Bobby. One of Damn Sky's favorite words, Bobby. <laughs> All right. Uh, this one I sent back to the author as well um, to see if he could update it. Um, it's got a little bit of a problem where it flickers, um, so it's a really cool it's much different than all the rest it's got a feature that none of the others had um, but it flickers too much and so it loses some points there um, I took a little bit look at the code and it uh, it clears the monitor every half of a second and then redraws the entire thing and while it's redrawing it's calculating these gain values and that takes CPU cycles so it just means it takes a long time to draw the whole screen I think he could either you know, only update certain values, don't clear the whole thing every time, um, would make it not flicker. And the other thing would be to calculate all the values first, then clear the screen, then draw it. Because drawing is very quick, and clearing is very quick, but it's the, the calculations that take a while. Okay, so his the features of his, he's got these nice um, cells that match my color screen, the gray and light blue, which is cool. I've got the percents down here. And when it's turned on, rather than making green or red, he's, he's animating the outside which is really cool I like that and then this is the feature that no one else put in that um, was the gain and this kind of tells you I guess how much it's gone up or down and I'm not sure if that's every half a second or second or two whatever um, but that's really cool I can see that you know engine one is being used a ton and I guess that's 12 megajoules? I don't know. How much is that? Is that 1 meg megajoule? It's definitely not 1300. Um, so yeah, so we might need a, a caption to tell us this is what, what this value it is, or maybe just use it in MJ. Just straight up MJ, 12.0 or something MJ, a tick. And that would be really easy to, to do. And then uh, these values change a lot. You know, it'll be like negative 1338, and then all of a sudden it'll be like positive 700, then down and negative. So I'm wondering, the other thing I asked him to do uh, was to change this to like an average over the last maybe 5, 10, 15 seconds, just so it's a little bit more accurate, doesn't change all that often. Uh, but what this does tell me is three of my engines are not even being used, so we've got a ton of power left that we could be using. Okay, that's it. Uh, I guess time to make a decision. Hmm. I like them all. Uh, one thing I want to do while I'm thinking is go check my supply. 34%. Awesome. That is really good. It was at 27 last video, so it's going up slowly, but it is going up. Meaning even when all our engines turned on and all the debugging I've been doing and the force... Uh, force field turned on up there everything else running it's uh we're not chewing through 
our force logs faster than we're getting them, which is great. So I'm happy with that. All our villagers are still here. There's Jordan right there. I guess I don't have to make a uh, a villager after you. I already did it. I forgot I did that last video. Oh well. Uh, yeah, so you've already got a villager. Okay, so... Um, glasses are cool and all, but I think the competition was just for the pure monitor. So I'm going to leave... Uh, Maybe go to the glasses on a tiebreaker, but I'll go ahead and just leave it um, to just judging the monitors themselves. Uh, so give me one sec and I'll com calculate the winners and we'll go ahead and name the pet buddy after you. Be right back. Okay, guys, I've made my decision. We'll go from third place on up, uh, judging completely just on the monitor display, not the extra credit with the terminal glasses. Third place goes to... Matthew Bates. I liked this one because it was very clean, very simple. The layout was really good, and the, you know the colors are are nice. I like the blue. So that's third place. Congratulations, Matthew. You already have a villager named after you, so you're good to go. And just get my kudos for submitting an awesome program. All right, in second place uh, we have Thiago TGM. Um, the things I really liked about this one again are the layout. Uh, he's maximized the screen. Um, he's got some nice color coding, so it's really easy to tell. And he's got the automatic and manual controls, which is kind of above and beyond. And I like it. I think the only thing I didn't like was the, the gray and the yellow background, but those are very easy to change. So congratulations on second place, Thiago. I'll make sure you have a villager named after you. And the winner and the receiver of Little Funshine renamed to your Minecraft skin and name is a Bobby <laughs> uh, more inspiration than anything uh, he did a few things that no one else did and which I didn't think of to do myself and one is to actually calculate how fast they're going up and down and uh, also to kind of animate rather than just use a color code so you kind of get that cool display um, I've asked him to go ahead and fix the flicker um, also, if you can fix the gap between three and four, it's incorrect. There's only two spaces there, so it kind of looks funny. Um, but those are very cosmetic, and I kind of judged on the entire design. Um, so, as um, we'll give you this caveat. I'll, re I'll rename Little Funshine after you, but you've got to, therefore, fix these little issues. So, fix the flicker, fix the spacing, and please give me an average gain other than just a net gain over the last tick. Um, that would be really awesome. Uh, so again, thank you to everyone that submitted a, uh, a monitor code. Um, we had eight entries. That's more than I expected. So I really, I'm really happy about that. And congratulations to Bobby. So let's go ahead and rename Little Funshine. Uh, things we need. Um, I can't remember. <laughs> so we'll go figure it out. I know I need a stick. Uh, and then let's see. What was it? It was the stick, and I don't think it was bread. Well, bread puts him back to your your own guy, to a, like a human character. Um, was it an apple, maybe? Let's try an apple. Could have been an emerald. It could have been... No, leather makes a cow. Maybe wheat? I don't know. I don't know. Potato? Carrot? We'll try them all. <laughs> uh, diamond? Let's see, what else could make you? Feather makes a chicken, that makes an enderman. That makes a spider. Could be string. All right, let's test all of those and see. So first, where did you go? There you are. All right, he told me his in-game name is Duke underscore Bobby. So let's go ahead and do, well, let's actually, let's do, let's try and get the skin first. So it's not an apple. Um, he's in love with me. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Not an emerald. Not a carrot. Not a potato. Not a diamond. Oh my goodness. And that made you a spider. Huh. I know I can go in creative mode and change it. Uh, well, it's just a stick, but let's keep looking. So we got some watermelon, maybe? No? 
I remember it was something pretty obscure. Lapis? I don't think it was wood or anything like a block. I think it was definitely an item. Let's try an arrow. Let's try... Flint? <laughs> Charcoal? A bone? Maybe it's a bone. No, that would make you a skeleton. No, that makes you a dog. <laughs> Uh, I can't remember. Unfortunately, the wiki on this mod is not very good. And it's been updated since, so I think all the information is for a new version. Alright, that made you a skeleton. No, I keep shift collecting it in there. Lapis. Nope. I know I've done it before. I did it to myself. Hmm. You guys are probably screaming at your monitor right now. I'll probably make a pigman. Uh, oh, maybe it's. Oh, do we try bread already? No, that just makes you back. Da, da, da. Fish. Um, raw beef. <laughs> Egg. Oh, I just threw it at you. That made you a cat. Well, that's kind of cool. I can have a cat. Will this make you a cow? Yeah. Darn it. What was it? All right, guys. I'm going to figure it out, and I will be right back. Okay, guys. I'm back. Um, I figured it out. I'm not sure why I didn't try this in the first place, but it's leather. Leather will allow you to change the skin. So, again, his name was, uh, what, Demon Bobby? Duke Bobby. Um. Submit the skin, and then we'll need to give him, whack him with a stick. And choose a name for the little Duke Bobby. We'll just call him Bobby. And then we will give you some bread. Oh no. You're Steve. <laughs> that didn't work. All right, let's try and fix him again. Duke underscore Bobby. Hmm. Let me know, Bobby, if that's uh, your skin. <laughs> I assume it's not. Um, it needs to be case sensitive, so if that's your in-game name, then something's not working. But I will give it a try. I'll try and look up your name on one of the uh, skin stealers or something and see if I can find it out. But otherwise, that will be Bobby by next episode, hopefully, if he gets back to me. I can throw this stuff away. So I found Duke Bobby. Uh, it was all lowercase, assuming that's your skin. If that's not your skin, let me know. Um, but that's the one that came up when I did it all lowercase, so hopefully that's your skin. I'm just going to rename him Bobby again, just because I think that's easier. And submit the name. There we go. <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, I went and looked at Duke Bobby's channel. He doesn't make YouTube videos, um, so can't really give him a shout out to go check his videos or sub to him anyway but anyway he that's duke bobby thanks for the monitor program i'm gonna probably make changes to it so don't get um, upset if i change your code around a little bit um but i appreciate the design and the inspiration that you've given me okay do we want to do anything the rest of the episode how much time we got we got some time yeah i want to do some stuff okay cool we are going to make some doors and i've just gone and uh rather than make drawbridge doors let's just make airlocks they're too much cool so much cooler yeah, look. that didn't work. Where are you, airlock? Fine. At Galactocraft. Uh, da, da, da. Where are you, airlock doors? Not in there. What the heck? Why are they missing? Am I looking past them? Alright, we're gonna check anything. Stone, turf, compressor, zoom pads, bricks, collector, finder. Airlock frame. There it is. Anyway, okay. So we need a ton of these. Airlock frames. Go. Alright, so we've got everything. Put this stuff down here. Oh my goodness. These are not cheap. It's 
one of these concentrators for every frame. And each of those is a ton of tin and invar. Oh, wow. Okay. Let's get 16 of that. Let's get 16 of that if we can. Oh, man. Four, five, let's search for 10. Six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. Maybe we will be choosing drawbridges. Holy crap. Or I've got to automate this crafting because this is going to suck. Yeah, I'm out of invar. You make an invar? Where would invar be made? Right here. Yep, she's making some invar. Cool. Um, the plan is to seal, try to use the sealers. Um, it's going to be a little bit difficult because I've got so many spaces that are not square. I mean, this is a good one here. We can seal this off. We could seal this off in there. But then this, this space would be kind of in the open. And then... This one, I have you know, some spaces that aren't solid blocks. I don't know. I'm going to have to go through and check each one of these you know, to see if they're openings. I'm, I'm not sure if tilled dirt is solid. Because um, I don't think I can seal the entire base with one sealer. And it's possible I could seal right here and then down below. And then this entire upstairs and downstairs would be one area. I'm going to have to edit the configs because the stained glass by itself is not a solid block, but I can tell it that it is. Uh, so this round would be fine. Let's look down here again. So then if I put something here and something there, these could probably just be piston doors. They don't need to be airlocks all over the place. And then this room and then upstairs would be sealed if I put another one here. Yeah, I might do that. And then I can go ahead and... Oh, this one I can't. So I'd have to put airlock here, airlock there, airlock there, there and there. So I'd need five airlocks. And then I would... Oh, I don't think I can do it because of that right there. Oh, that might be because I've surrounded with red. If I set, if I set red net energy cell as a solid block, that might work. <laughs> so what I'm going to focus on probably is like the hallway, um, the farm room, and then the basement, and try and seal those off. So I don't have to have these stupid bubbles everywhere. That's the plan. This will be all sealed off right here. So in between episodes, I'm going to either craft a ton of airlock frames or airlock blocks or I will craft a ton of drawbridges. Either way we'll get something cool going next episode. That's going to be it for Function X's Feed the Beast Unleashed in Space. Hope you guys liked all the cool submissions from the subscribers. Uh, stay tuned to my channel. Maybe I'll have some more uh, either subscri uh, subscriber stream events like we had the other day with uh, the building game or I'll submit some more challenges because I, I always like interacting with the viewers a lot better when I get either asked for stuff from you guys or, or we get to play together or do something like that. So if you have suggestions on games that we could play as a, uh, a subscriber base, um, that would be cool. And let me know in the comments. Make sure you hit that subscribe and that like button if you liked the video. And I will see you guys next time. This has been Fletcher X. Bye.